Okay, so I have a few slides which I will try to keep really, really quick to introduce the problem. Um, I named this efficient memory allocation between different subsystems, but really it's also known as, as resurrecting the Unix device memory allocator uh, work that was proposed and based on a XDC presentation in 2016, I can't believe it's that old, by uh, James Jones. Um, <clears throat> I rephrase, so th there's a link on this slide to his slide, so if you, you can grab that afterwards to, uh, to have the full details, I didn't want to make a full copy of that. But the problem statement is split in different parts. We're talking about how to handle buffer allocation. Uh, so the, how does an, uh, an application allocate image buffers that can be shared between multiple components, multiple uh, producers and consumers in the system uh, in a way that will work and that will provide optimal performance. Uh, there's a question of, Beside allocation of that memory, how do we negotiate formats? Uh, what do I need to, how do I need to configure my camera and my video encoder and my display? Uh, what pixel format should I use? What are the constraints on the strides to make sure that uh, there will be interoperability between those components? Uh, and there's an added point here compared to uh, the, the presentation from James, uh, that is cache management. How do we ensure both correctness, obviously, uh, but performance as well? So in this discussion, I'm mixing happily the words buffers, buffer objects, frame buffers, surfaces. They're used for different, uh, in different ways, in different subsystems, different part of use space in the kernel. So it's a bit messy, a bit messy that we don't have a, a common vocabulary. Uh, but don't, uh, don't tell me off if I'm using one word uh, instead of another, because we don't have a consensus on, on all of those across uh, the whole kernel. One problem that James listed that I think is mostly solved is unsynchronization. Uh, we do have fence support in the kernel. We have support for both implicit and explicit fences. Uh, my understanding is that explicit fences is the way to go for new APIs. Um, and it's missing in video for Linux. It's not everywhere. Uh, it is in DRM. And well, we discussed extensively before that uh, this is something that we, we want to improve in, uh, in video for Linux as well. So I don't think uh, there's really a need to, to discuss about this today. Basic use case, uh, there's a camera obviously because I'm here. Uh, you have an application in the middle and you want to display that. Um, so you want to make sure that you can allocate buffers uh, that will be able to store images from a camera being displayed without having any, uh, any memory copy in the middle. Of course, that basic use case is a bit more complicated because you do have your camera hardware and your driver, but you have lip camera uh, uh, between your application and the camera. You may even have GStream on top of that. Uh, and then on the other side for the display, you may have a, a graphical user interface toolkit, QGTK, whatever, that's going to talk to a compositor, uh, one of the different Wayland compositors, uh, and on the back end, uh, your surface will be directed to uh, a GPU composition or to uh, direct composition by your display hardware through KMS directly, uh, or it's even going to be uh, composite by the, the, the CPU in some cases if you really have to do that. So from an application point of view, you don't really know and see uh, how your buffer is going to be consumed, uh, or possibly in some cases exactly how it's going to be produced. Uh, your camera may DMA to the buffer directly. Uh, we have a workaround for some platforms where we're missing ISP support in lib camera with the software ISP, so we have the CPU writing the image. Um, and the for the application, it's complete, completely transparent. And then if you add your video, video encoder, your NPU and other components into the mix, that gets even more complicated, obviously. We shouldn't, uh, this is supposed to be a next slide after that, uh, okay. We shouldn't forget about a use case where, uh, well, we want to capture an image and just process that with the CPU and do nothing else. Uh, so it's not about just about sharing buffers between producer and consumers that are hardware, but that can be very simple as well. Um, so a bit of a recap, we do have multiple buffer allocations on the kernel side, so I'm not talking about generic allocate, uh, allocation APIs, but things that are suitable uh, to have buffers that uh, devices can DMA to or DMA from. Um, so we have uh, APIs in DRM, and those are mostly driver specific. Each driver will have its own IOCTLs to allocate the buffers. Um, we have APIs in video for Linux, they are generic. Uh, the backend behind them is driver specific. Each driver will select which backend it wants. The 
does it want uh, DMA contiguous memory? Can it support scatter gather? Will there be an IMMU? Um, and then we have a bit more recent DMA heaps. So that's generic uh, allocators that will give you, uh, will give you a DMA buff object. Uh, and the back end behind those is selectable by the user, so by the application user space. Uh, mentioning here UDMA buff as well, uh, that allows you to wrap uh, MemFD inside a DMA buff object. I'm mentioning DMA buff a lot because that's the de facto solution today on Linux to share buffers between different components. That, I think, is not going away and it's not something that we want to reinvent. So everything has to use DMA buff object. Um, <clears throat> And those, uh, those multiple APIs are, so they're based on standard IOCTLs, device-specific IOCTLs. In a later case, it's more complicated, obviously, to, uh, to use from uh, generic applications. And they also focus specifically on the needs of the device they cater for. So video for Linux, what it will allocate a device for a camera, will not take into account GPU tiling. Um, we have nothing in the API that would take that into account. Same thing on the DRM side. Uh, DRM will make sure that or whatever, whatever DRM driver you have, you will have APIs that make sure that the buffer uh, will match the needs of your GPU for rendering or of your display engine, uh, but without thinking too much about the camera side. We have some relevant prior art, and there's a bit more than that listed in the slides from, from James. Uh, in, in user space, so we have GBM, part of Mesa, and the mini GBM, part of Chrome OS, uh, that are user space libraries uh, that will allocate buffers for you, but those are mostly targeting the display use cases and the rendering use cases, not so much certainly for GBM, not, uh, not on the camera side. We have Graloc on Android, which does pretty much what we're trying to do today, but in a way that can't really be replicated to a generic system, because Android uh, expects system vendors to provide a Graloc implementation for their systems, and so that implementation knows what devices are present, know exactly what GPU, know exactly what camera, what video encoder, and the constraints of those devices. So the API exposed by Graloc is relatively high level, and when an application will say, I want to be able to capture an image from a camera, a buffer to, to capture an image from a camera, uh, Graloc will know that the camera hardware has these requirements. While on a more generic system, if you want a more generic API, that will not be the case. You can't have, you, you, you can't ship a uh, standard element in user space today that will run on random Linux systems without knowing what's in there that will make the right decision. Um, <clears throat> EGL streams, they kind of solve part of the problem as well. It's a, a Kronos API, uh, but not really something that I think can be leveraged. There's a me big memory allocation API in Vulkan. That's a big part of Vulkan. Uh, which is the reason why people say that to draw a single triangle uh, in your first Vulkan program, you need 1,000 lines of code in your application. So that's fairly complicated, fairly low level, matches the needs of display and, uh, and, and rendering uh, fairly well, uh, but again, not a generic component that today can be leveraged as such. Um, so the question is, what do we do? Uh, I've brought up this topic because this is something we face in LibCamera. We have support, we, we have designed the API in camera to be centered around importing buffers. So we say the application should have a buffer and give it to Leap camera so that we, capture an, uh, we can capture an image in that buffer. And if your application today has, uh, wants to render something and, will, uh, and gets a buffer from uh, the display side, assuming that it gets a buffer that can be DMA2 on the display side, most likely the camera will be able to access it in at least in the system we've been working on, uh, but there's no, there are absolutely no guarantee. Uh, so it kind of worked by chance. I don't know what percentage of the time. Um, but if your application just wants to capture images from a camera and save them to, to a file, we didn't want to force those applications to go and find a source of a DMA buff somewhere. So we kind of have an allocator API in Leap Camera today. And I think that's bad because every framework, uh, every kernel API, every framework, because we don't want to force users to get something from another place that doesn't exist, there's no central allocator, uh, we duplicate all that work everywhere. Every kernel API, video for Linux, DRM, uh, have their own allocators. Uh, Leap Camera has an allocator. Uh, we have, well, GBM in Mesa for the, for the display use cases. So we do lots of du duplication there. And we would like, from a leap camera point of view, to see that fixed because we're running into issues with cache management, with allocation, and things like that. Um, 
I described the problem space, uh, memory allocation, that's the one I'm the most interested in. And then there's the negotiation of the formats and strides and different constraints when it comes to the layout of the image in those buffers. That's a secondary, uh, from my personal point of view, at least a secondary goal. I think it's important, but less urgent for me. Um, and the question is, who would like to see this addressed? Which small subset of that group would be willing to contribute? Uh, and how we could, uh, we could make that happen. So there will be a session about this at XDC next month in October, uh, for those of you who, who plan to be there. Um, but is there anyone in the room today who's interested in this topic, thinks it's worth working on, uh, has ideas, would have an interest in working on that? So question is for the room now. Microphone. I think it would be very good to have this for, for inter interoperability to help and to help user space to, 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 to allocate memory, but I have no time to work on this. Okay, so you're part of the first group, you want to see this fixed, but you want you want to do it yourself. Yes. <laughs> I am part of the first group. I want to get it fixed and I think I kick, I know I think I know who can help you on, on doing this. That means I don't have to do it. Okay. I think Thomas and mm -hmm. Ricky are your two people to talk about this. Okay. So I have a query. As part of uh, your presentation, you mentioned Android is supporting, uh, there is no limitation, right? All the subsystems are supported by the Android. So Gralock in yeah. Android yes. uh, supports all the Android use cases. So you ask it for a buffer and you say, I want a buffer that the camera will write and that the display will read and that the CPU will read sometimes. Uh, rarely, but sometimes. And then it will give you what it think is the best buffer and the best format for that. Correct. So already there is a base which is working well, right? Can't it be taken as a reference to adopt here? Because the other models, whatever you mentioned, is only rendering related use cases. So from a functionality point of view, yes, that is something that can be done. Uh, I mean, we're looking at the feature set, uh, because we, we want, basically we have the same goal. But the big difference is that that component in Android being shipped by the system vendor knows about the devices you have in the system. And so it can make those decisions based on that knowledge. While if we want to have a generic implementation, a generic solution that works in Linux in general uh, for all vendors, uh, we will need somehow to have a component that will be able to learn about those constraints of the different devices. So we'll probably have some, need something a bit more complex where the application knowing what it wants to do with the buffers, knowing which devices or which frameworks uh, the buffers will be produced uh, by and consumed by, uh, will need to interrogate those to get a set of constraints in some form that he can pass to a centralized place that will resolve those constraints. The constraints will ultimately come from the kernel, I assume. We may need help from the kernel for constraint resolution as well, and then allocate the memory from the right place based on the resolution of those constraints. Let me just understand one thing. You are talking basically about a user space library Eventually, of course, with kernel support, right? Or are you talking about some other subsystem in the kernel? What, what is your idea on that? So uh, I'm approaching this from a lib camera point of view because I would have loved to develop a lib camera without having an allocator and only importing buffers. Uh, and we felt the pain of having to have an allocator. Uh, and so I don't want the next framework to have to do the same. And I would like the allocator and lib camera to be removed uh, in, in the long run. So I'm looking at all the subsystems. We need something that will work for everybody. Uh, that's kind yes, of the goal. Yes, but this is, can still be uh, like what we have lib, lib trace. I mean, we could have a very low level lab, uh, library on user space that Mesa, uh, uh, lib camera, and others would be used, or it could be something at the kernel, or it could be both. So what are you thinking about? We, we could look at both options, that's interesting. I think it should be indeed a, a shared library in user space that different components can use. My view of that is that it would mostly be used either directly by applications or at least by frameworks, yeah. uh, where GTK, for instance, would use that library to offer buffers that can be used. Uh, so you may, because this is going to be a fairly low level API and maybe a bit more, compl more complex to use, maybe we'll have toolkits that will help using it. Uh, 
but I think m my goal at least is to be able to remove allocation from Leap Camera. Uh, so Leap Camera would only import buffers, and so Leap Camera would not use that library at least to resolve constraints and allocate the buffers because I don't want it to allocate them. It may use that library, a part of the, the system, however, when the application will ask Leap Camera, okay, for this particular camera, if I want to capture, uh, um, capture images in memory, what are the constraints that need to be matched? And those constraints will likely be somehow opaque to the application. It's going to be something that it will get and then have to pass to the centralized allocator. That's the way I would see it. Uh, but of course, defining those constraints in a way that standardizes Something that's fairly complicated. Um, James have, uh, has uh, more details on, uh, on a proposal. He centered it a bit more, I think, on the formal negotiation. Um, but uh, I think that the allocation is also also a goal there. And so there's, in the slides, there's, uh, there's more information about a few C structures and ways to express some of the constraints. Uh, some of the constraints are very easy. Do you need contiguous memory or not? Uh, what is the alignment of the stride that you need, things like that. And then you get into areas where you have vendor specific constraints and you have devices where you're going to capture YUV images in two planes and the, one, the Luma plane has to be in one DDR bank and the Chroma plane in another DDR physical bank and things that can get fairly crazy. We've seen that more in the past, fortunately less these days. Uh, but I'm sure that if we design an API and release something that will only use simple constraint because it's all we're seeing, the next day we'll have complex ones from the vendors. Um, but that's life. Uh, so something that's extensible with new set of constraints will probably be needed. One, one more question. Between source and uh, destination, if there are different alignment requirements, allocator, take, allocator library, whatever you are talking, that takes care and give the feedback to the source if there is a misalignment? That would, be the, uh, that would be the idea. Uh, this centralized component would say, OK, if you want to capture from the camera and then encode, this is the alignment on the, on the stride that you need to have, for instance. Go ahead. James? Can you guys hear me, Andrew? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I just, just wanted, wanted to say, for the, the constraint, constraint stuff, stuff, I think I there think was some Besides the presentation you linked, um, really it was Simon Sarah did a lot more work to formalize that to an actual proposal, I think uh, two or three XDCs ago. And there's a, there's a slide deck and some header sample code about, about that that uh, defines a, or attempts to define the vendor agnostic way to express the constraints. And uh, one of the big open questions there was, where, where do you resolve those constraints? Is it in user space or should they be pushed down to the kernel? I, I'd always initially assumed the, the kernel, but then Simon Sarah kind of talked me into the user space option being valid too. But then the question is where you dispatch it to for actual allocation. And that it's complicated. That's that's a big open issue. Hard one. Do I understand correctly you'll be at XDC next month? I will be, yeah. Any other feedback on these? Yeah, Hans? I guess if you really want to support all the random vendor specific cases as well, then I can't think of any other way than that you, uh, the allocator would have to have knowledge about the devices involved and ask those devices specifically. So make a proposal, is it working? Uh, um, uh, I, I suspect it might be extreme. So I remember at a DMA, when DMA buff was first uh, initiated, I was actually, was it also for Bloomberg? I don't know. I was at the same uh, room as well. and. Um, the UMA buff is kind of ignoring all this, right, today. So I think we had a, a very short discussion there as well. My idea was, uh, oh, what, what, a lot, what requirements do you have? Contiguous, scatter together, weird. Uh, so the first two would be easy, and now we have some additional requirements as well. But um, vendor specific is really hard. And would you be, would it be worth all the effort? Uh, on another question, by the way, because for video for Linux uh, and DRM for that matter as well, you also have to synchronize, you know, depending on the format. So when you allocate, you want to say, okay, you want to buffer, then they also, presumably somehow you either need to pass that format or you use the currently defined format. Uh, and the only way I think you can, can implement this is if you actually can go to the devices themselves and say, okay, this is, 
you can, for example, you ask DRM first and then say, this is the proposal from DRM, and then Video for Linux would say, oh, well, yeah, no, close, but no cigar, but let's try this and perhaps go back. Of, I have no idea. This is an extern it's very complicated method, but trying to support everything, all the weird stuff, I'm a little bit skeptical about that, whether it's worth the effort or whether we should just um, go to a decent sets of features, and if you can't support that, then uh, you have to do it on your own. You have to figure it out yourself. Good questions. Uh, when it comes to going to the device, I think we'll have to indeed, uh, to get the constraints from the devices, possibly also for the constraint resolution. Uh, it's not entirely clear, but certainly it's a device. Uh, ultimately, it's the device driver that will know about the constraints. Uh, that's where the knowledge uh, needs to come from. I hope that we would be able to um, split uh, the, the, the two and, and handle the two problems of uh, format negotiation and uh, buffer location separately. So first negotiate a format, say, OK, uh, I end up having this pixel format, this tried, because I know that's going to work. And then after that, we get to the allocator saying, OK, now allocate a buffer that's suitable for those uh, with the size that's needed for that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if that would be the case. If we, if we have to combine both and handle both at the same time, it becomes even more complicated. Uh, I think at the end of the day, we'll have to experiment with something and see, see how that goes. At least part of this we have already on uh, GStreamer. I mean, it already does all these negotiations with different devices and even on different parts of GStreamer itself, in terms of format negotiation, uh, in terms of uh, stride and things like that. So at least part of this you already have somewhere. So maybe it would be a matter of just picking those parts of the code and placing it on a library. That's but a very then, good idea. Yeah. Uh, we do have indeed negotiation of capabilities between pads in GStreamer, so we could look at how it's done and either get inspiration for, uh, from that. I'm not sure if we'd be able to reuse some of the code because I assume it's kind of tied with the rest of GStreamer, but at least looking at how it's done and see uh, what concepts they have there, that could be useful. If, if my memory serves, and I might be wrong, it might have or it might have been changed. I think GStreamer is always allocating the buffers from DRM. So if Video for Linux would have more strict requirements, then it would fail. But I, this may have changed. So this. No, I guess it's changed. I guess. Uh, on the allocation side, indeed, it would do that on the consumer at least by default. I think maybe you have. Um, I, I don't know exactly how it's working today, and things may have changed indeed. <clears throat> but when it comes to resolving constraints, what is the stride that is needed? Uh, that is something that I think uh, GStreamer does. Uh, and, and, uh, and using a pixel format that will work for, for all the components, that is something that GStreamer does. I so have at to, least to, that part to, we could to, look to at. touch on this code once when we are trying to do some uh, DMA buff implementation uh, that was back in Samsung days, so it was like uh, seven years ago, maybe. But I do remember that um, it does a negotiation, it gets all the information it needs from the, both the RM and the video file side. So from the, the query point of view, it will have everything there. Of course, it has its own in instructions inside the gestion. You won't be wanting all that complexity on your library, but that part is solved. Maybe the only part that may require is about scatter gather or continuous memory, so yes. this is a little bit more. Yes. We have, I, I mentioned the DMA heaps that we have in the kernel today. Uh, I think that could be a, a, way, um, a way forward. Uh, today we only have in mainline, I think, two different heaps, so that's fairly limited, but I think that will grow. Uh, and so using that as the backend allocator would probably be, uh, be possible, but we'll need to resolve constraints to make sure we select the right heap with the right parameters. Uh, it's missing a few things, like there's no accountability on the, the memory that's, uh, that you locate, but VFL2 has the same thing. If you have uh, C groups and, you know, and if you have limits on the memory that an application or process can allocate, uh, that is not enforced by buffer location in, uh, in video for Linux or in DRM. Neither it is in DMA heaps, but I think that could be fixed. And it would probably be easier to fix that once in DMA heaps than having to fix it twice in DRM and VFL. 
Um, so I think centralizing allocation around DMA heaps is, uh, would be a good idea, but we still need to know how, what heap to use with what parameters. Right now, between uh, graphics and display, GBM defines set of formats. But uh, defining one more uh, allocator, right, it can bring its own set of the uh, format definitions, right? How they can coexist? That's a very good question. That's, that's one of the reasons why I think GBM is not a solution as such today, because it caters for the needs of graphics and rendering. Um, could it be extended with additional formats? Certainly. I mean, it's probably uh, going to be a bit of work, because when we look at things, we looked at YUV allocation, buffer allocation in, uh, was that in mini GBM or in GBM itself? Yes, and that's, I mean, the, the code was clearly meant for, for the graphic side, so we wouldn't need, but, but that's a technical problem. Uh, the, even if we have to refactor and rewrite lots of things internally, that's a technical problem. Um, but I, I, I'm not sure what else than ad adding new formats would be needed there, but it's something we can definitely look at. Um, Designed around the GB, the DRM format, so that when we look into that for YUV formats, we have we would have need to go to DRM people, convince them that uh, YUV I think was a suitable format, wasn't needed, and they don't need that for graphics. So we have to define in, that, in this case, I think a superset of the format that GBM currently support would be needed. B12 is one example, right? Yeah. I don't recall, but there are some formats that are missing, certainly. There's some limited YUV support, I think, for some format that are relevant to graphics, but uh, James raised his hand. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, I just wanted, wanted to say, I think, 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 Method with uh, the format method, which is incomplete for, for other, other systems. systems. And um, um, the format, format modifier mechanism for like, negotiating, negotiating the format, format and, and, and the and layout, layout of the buffer um, for, for that format memory. memory. Um, but but, but it's it's all, all, it all falls all apart if you don't want to use very, very simple, simple layouts. layouts. Uh, and, and, and if you want to do anything like device by locality, because all the allocators GBM is defined in terms of allocating more or one graphic device, one specific graphic device. If you want right, to allocate, allocate for, for even like, like a, a Phoenix, Phoenix, it's not a graphic device, device it's display or video or code or anything like that. that. Um, it's just it's not the right ADI yet. 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 Um, yet. It does, it does do a great, great job allocating graphic graph graph device for a great device. device. Yeah, I agree. Hmm. Any other input from the room? Or do we call it today? We can call it today, but just to mention that one specific pain point was also mapping formats. Between the camera side and the DRM side, we got issues there because while the format definition is different, the, but the concept here is the same, but there might be things in the middle that requires you to do the mapping in a device-specific way. So. Yes, and, and VFAL2 and DRM both use false CCs to define pixel formats, and then you have identical formats that use two different phone CCs on the two sides, or different formats that use the same phone CC, and it's, it's always great. Like you call RGB 24, 24 in, uh, in VFL2 is actually BGR888 in DRM, and it's just, <laughs> that and goes lots of headaches. And that's hard to fix right now, because I mean, we, we, they we, grow and separate, so. Yes, we have a big table that converts between the two in Lip Camera, and that has been tested. So if you ever wonder which DRM format corresponds to what VFL2 format, look in the Lip Camera source code. That's, that is a source of, tr of truth at the moment. Maybe we need a unique definition of the of the uh, of four CCs in Linux. That mm. what's the uh, number of the XKC XKCD when we, we, we need a new standard to. Uh, yeah. <laughs> There are other relevant standards, actually. There's a Kronos standard that's called the Kronos Data Format Specification, I think. Uh, so it's not about 
um, pixel formats as 4CCs, but it's, it's about describing the exact layout of a pixel format, and that takes hundreds of bytes uh, to do the description, but that is standardized. So it's not something that could be used as a format identifier towards, uh, towards components, but it's fairly useful if you want to clearly uh, describe a format in a way that's possible by a machine. Uh, but it's oriented, uh, it's meant for graphics because it's Kronos API. Kronos is mostly so far about graphics. Uh, it's gonna change a bit with uh, the, the work doing, uh, we're, going there, uh, we're doing there with four cameras. Uh, so that spec could possibly be extended at some point. It could be part of the, the solution, uh, but not, not as a format identifier, probably. All right, three. Two, one, thank you very much.